stay-at-home order requires anyone over the age of two wear a face mask in public when they can't maintain uh, six feet of social distancing. But that guidance can sometimes come with an extra burden for minority communities. Today, State Representative Cam Buckner detailed an incident on his Twitter feed about his interaction with a police officer after shopping with a mask at a store in the South Loop. And joining us now live to talk about that incident is State Representative Cam Buckner. Representative, uh, we appreciate you being with us. So you're leaving the big box store with your cart. What happened? Yeah, thank you guys for having me tonight. Um, I was leaving the, the store with, with my cart with items that had been purchased, uh, and I was approached by a uniform officer uh, who questioned me about uh, the the uh, the items in my cart. I told him I just purchased them from the store. He asked for a receipt, uh, which I didn't readily have available. I found a receipt that was uh, deep in my pocket. I gave it to him. He then uh, asked for identification uh, and walked to his nearby squad car to, uh, I assume, run uh, my name, uh, and then came back and brought back both the uh, ID and the receipt. And I, I questioned him and asked him why did he make the the stop in the first place. Uh, and his answer was that people are using coronavirus to do bad things, that he could not see my face and that I looked like I was up uh, to something. Uh, Representative Buckner, when masks were becoming a part of our daily lives, were you at all hesitant uh, to wear one thinking that something like this could happen and knowing the history with black men and confrontations with the law enforcement. Did that make you take pause of wearing one in the first place? No, absolutely, um, Michael. So, I, you know, being, being a black male, uh, I understand uh, the historical context of, of um, you know, a lot of the uh, stereotypes that come with uh, just our, our very existence. And I know that myself, as well as other folks who I've had conversations with, uh, were extremely apprehensive about uh, the mask order, even though I, I know it's the right thing to do. Um, we, we realize that um, there are uh, stereotypes in place that create these critical uh, implicit biases uh, that put us in danger. Did you say anything to the officer afterward? I, after I received my, um, my license, my ID back, and, uh, and he told me the reason why he, was, um, uh, why he spoke with me, um, he walked away, I walked away. I, I never uh, identified myself as a state representative or, or as an attorney. Um, you know, I just took uh, my, my things and, and, and left. And if I thought about it last night, I wasn't going to make a public uh, statement about it. But uh, it, it weighed on me more and more today, and I, and I felt it was necessary to do so because I know that this is not a, a, a siloed event. This is not something that is novel. I know it's happening to other people, and I want to be able to speak out about it so we can change the way we operate. Other than speaking out today, have you gone to the police department to report these officers? And do you think that Senators Cory Booker and Kamala Harris are right in their demand that the Department of Justice uh, should start teaching, incorporating anti-bias training to law enforcement agents? So I have not reached out to, to COPA, which would be the, the, um, the, 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 uh, the agency um, that would handle these uh, police um, issues because I'm not even sure yet that it was actually misconduct, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the law gives the, the law enforcement officers the ability to make these, um, these kind of routine stops if people are under reasonable suspicion, which is a Fourth Amendment right, but it is um, it's very subjective. Um, I actually spoke with Court, uh, Senator Booker today. We, we, we are um, we're acquaintances and, uh, you know, gave him the rundown of, of this. And I do think that uh, he and Senator Harris uh, have um, the right uh, the right notions in mind when they want to make sure that federally we're, we're dealing with this in an intentional way. You mentioned in the Twitter thread, Representative, the talk you got from a mentor about dressing like a prospect, not a suspect, and then you raised and answered the question, which to me is, no, I never got that talk, and that's really sort of at the heart of your point here. Yeah, and, and what I said in, 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 the, um, in, the, in, the, in the thread, Joe, was that, um, you know, I know that this is part of kind of my training to become a, a man in this society, uh, whether it was my father or my uncles or mentors or coaches um, who would, uh, you know, give me the rules and the parameters to play by to make sure that you're safe, to make sure that you avoid situations like the one that I uh, had yesterday that could have, you know, escalated uh, very quickly. Um, and, you know, my question uh, is why, even though that is necessary and it seems to be, um, you know, with the, the way that we operate, why is that the way things are? Um, and if black men are, are having these conversations, um, is it something that, that we need to look at 
uh, on you know changing the entire way society operates. This could be extreme, but do you feel, and is it your feelings, and you can tell me yes or no, that police bias could prove to be even deadlier than the coronavirus for black people? Well, you know, we, we, we have seen over the course of the last, you know, I'll say 10 or so years as social media and the, uh, the, the readily, uh, the readily, uh, readily availableness, availability of, um, uh, of smartphones and cameras have, uh, have come to be that, you know, the, the, the way that certain communities, African-American communities and African-American males in particular, um, have, have been targeted by certain members of, of the law enforcement community. Uh, and, and many of these, uh, in, many of these uh, um, encounters end up uh, with somebody dead, right? And so uh, I, I won't go as far to say that it's going to, you know, it's more deadly than uh, the coronavirus. But but I will say that we have to have these conversations. Uh, avoiding uncomfortable conversations creates unfortunate realities, and that's where we are right now. And we've got to do something about that. All right, State Representative Cam Buckner, thank you so much. Be safe. Be well. Thank you. You as well. Thank, Thank you. you.